Okay, welcome to Tuning 101 here. This is the Tuning Standard, uh, Open Standard Tuning. Um, we're going to discuss Standard Tuning is your basic tuning for any electric and acoustic guitar, six string uh, style. There are many other tunings like Drop D, Open G, Drop C, and, and all that fun stuff. We're going to discuss your most basic standard uh, six string tuning. Okay. Uh, a couple things we also need to discuss is a floating bridge type like this picture here. If you have a floating bridge, drop back, ten, and punt. This is not the video for you. It's not the type of guitar you should have to start with as well. Uh, a couple other things I want to discuss with you. Which string is the first string and which string is the sixth string? On um, your standard guitars play, played right-handed, the first string is down here at the bottom. That's the skinny string, okay? Uh, and the sixth string is at the top. That's the, that's the thick string. Uh, many guitars are just like this guitar that you see I have in my uh, hands here. Three and three. Three strings on one side, three tuning keys, and three tuning keys on the other side. Many acoustics are the same way. But some guitars like a Fender Stratocaster, Fender Telecaster, and many other guitars have all six in one line, they call that. All six in a line. In that case, uh, they would all be generally on the top. Some guitars, do, they'll call it a reverse, like uh, Ibanez I did some of his reverse headstocks. Um, but your sixth string is still down here tuned, and then your fifth, fourth, third, second, first, it would be all the way up here at the top if you have that type of guitar. All six keys are on one side instead of three and three, for instance. Um, but uh, So it's important to know... Which string is the first string again? This is your skinny string, the first string. The sixth string is your thick string. So keeping that in mind, it's also, uh, I think, important for you to know what the notes of the strings are. Um, at the very top, your sixth string is an E. If you don't know what note that is, it's going to be a little tough to understand um, that it's in tune or not from your tuner because it, it's going to be giving you a letter and you need to know what letter is, is which. The fifth string is your A, the fourth string is your D, the third string is a G, the second string is a B, and what do you know, the first string is another E. It's actually two octaves higher than this E. There's one octave higher, and there's your second octave higher. That's a different video, but uh, we're just going to discuss why you have two E's on your guitar, but they don't sound exactly the same. Um, there's some different uh, cute little phrases that people have come up with to help you remember that. One of them is Ed 8 Dynamite, Goodbye Ed. So Ed, E, 8 is A, and so forth. Ed, Ed 8 Dynamite, Goodbye Ed. Okay. Um, so the next step would be to make sure that you can follow your six string, follow the string all the way to the tuner because if you're not t tuning the correct uh, tuning key, you're going to have problems as well. That's that's an issue that many beginning guitar players have. You need to make sure that the string that you're trying to tune, you follow that to the tuning key, and you know which one to to uh, change, be it sharp or flat. Sharp is going up higher, and flat is going down lower. Okay, so you want to picture that. Speaking of that, let's imagine that as a ladder. And the note you want is right here. And there's ladder steps below it, and there's ladder steps above your note. Um, generally, when you're tuning something, generally, the note is too low because notes, uh, the, the tuning will slip. It's rare that it goes sharp higher, but it does happen depending on the humidity in the room. Or if you have any children around, the first thing that they start messing with on a guitar is the tuning keys. It's the first thing is they start messing with. And it's the most dangerous thing. If you have some, some children come over to the house, they pick up your guitar, trust me, it will not be long whatsoever till they start twisting these guys. Uh, and they're not screws. The tighter they get, uh, and then, then they're good. The tighter they get, then the strings start breaking. So anyhow, let's, let's move on. I've got a clip-on tuner here. There's many different types of tuners. There's apps. There's the old standard where you put it on a desk and it has a microphone or you can plug into it. I favor uh, these clip-on tuners. Why do I favor them? Because they clip on to the, the headstock. This is the headstock of your guitar. And they feel the vibration 
Um, most of these other types of tuners that are on the market, be it an app uh, or the uh, ones that you sit there with a microphone and try to uh, play into, the problem with them is they have a microphone and they hear other things like me talking, the radio, the uh, stereo, the TV, uh, any, anything on. If you're in a band, the drummer's playing and the drummers never stop playing. Uh, they're always twiddling around there with, with something going on. So uh, you can't tune because there's always the bass player or somebody's making noise and, and you can't tune. When you have a clip-on tuner, it doesn't hear anything because it has no microphone. It is clipped onto your headstock and is sensing the vibration of the guitar. With that said, sometimes you'll need to change and move to a different spot on the, the neck because it will pick up vibrations better than other places. So this is, again, one example of a, of a tuner. I've, I only, honestly got a half dozen tuners because um, when I'm looking for one, I, I can never find it, and I've got enough guitars that uh, it's, uh, I'm always needing to tune somebody up. So you typically press the button to turn him on like this, and you see that that has a C on there. The C means chromatic. There's also a G, there's a B, there's a U, a V um, on most tuners. And what do those mean? That could mean chromatic, uh, which is what we're talking about here. Chromatic is going to listen for all 12 notes. C, C sharp, D, and, and all, all the possibilities of a note that you might have. Uh, a B is going to listen for bass notes just the bass notes. Uh, v is for violin, a U is for ukulele, for instance. Okay, now you could put it on G for guitar. Um, here's why I don't. If you put it on G for guitar, it's only going to li listen for the six notes. So here, let's say that we are between uh, A and D is a good one. There's a lot of space between A and D, or B and D, for instance. You, you know, uh, between B and D, you've got B, you've got C, C sharp, and then D. If you're if you're not on B and you're not on D, you're somewhere between. There's a lot of spots where you can be between, and you're not sure. And the tuner is going, well, you're not on B and you're not on D, and you're not really close to either one. I don't know what you want me to do. But if you go to a chromatic tuner or, or chromatic uh, setting on your tuner, it will uh, listen for all 12 notes. And if you're on, for instance, let's say uh, uh, G, and you can be on G sharp, or you can be on A, A sharp, and whatnot, it's going to tell you exactly where you're at. That's what I like about it. It's not going to get confused because it's only looking for six notes. It'll have a meter, and it'll tell you precisely what notes you're on. Okay. Now you notice that it went to, went to sleep, and they do that to save their battery. The battery is a little uh, dude back here in the back. You just pull him off, slip him back in. We carry those at DC Music as well, and you're back in business. So we're going to clip this onto the headstock of the guitar. I actually have a second one on backwards because it's hard for me to see the one that you're looking at because it's um, opposite uh, of me. All right, so let's tune our first string here. First string, let's start with the first string, why not? It should be an E. Now did you see that, that it lit up and it says E on there. You see the C real low, but you, that's telling us we're in chromatic, um, it's in the chromatic um, setup here, but the note that came up was E, and now it's left. There's a, several things to tell you about that. First off, when it went to E, it lit up, telling me that it's in tune. Now, if it just lights and it, and it goes back off, it means it kind of got there it got there at one point. Now, you want to know that a, a note goes like this. It's like a wave in the ocean, okay? You might be close, and it kind of is, is catching it uh, to a degree, but you want to make sure that it's all the way there. Now, it lit up because to tell you that it was in tune like that, but also, after a while, it went away because my note died off like that see now it, it doesn't hear it anymore so it just it went now that's not reading anything essentially now let's pretend that it was flat see how the e is low the gas tank is low the gas tank is to the left essentially that note is flat so i'm going to slowly watch how slowly i come up i'm continuing to play my note and bringing it up until i see that light 
uh, so I see the E in the middle. That's what I want. I want the light on, essentially, but I want, more importantly, I want that note to be, uh, the, the, the needle to be in the middle. Okay, 12 o'clock is where we want that to be. Pretty close, you know, like that. So my next string is the second string, and it's called the B string. We're pretty close to B, okay? Here's my B. The next string up, the third string, is going to be the G. Okay, and then we're going to go to the fourth string is D, the fifth string is A, and the sixth string is G. I'm sorry, the fifth and sixth string is uh, E. I'm looking at this and talking at the same time. And not, uh, not doing both very well. Anyhow, so those are your notes. But here's the thing. Many many people who are just starting out can't, uh, can't understand if they're on the right note, for instance. Um, we talked about octaves there a minute ago. Uh, this sixth string on, on top here is an E, but it could all literally be all the way down to the E below that or the E above it. It would probably break before it got there or hurt your guitar's neck. But um, how would you know as a beginning guitarist if you were at the right E? There's a big difference though. Let, let's listen to the difference in, in three E's for instance. Here is a low E on a guitar. Here is my middle E essentially. Hear the difference? They're both E's. They're quite a, quite a ways apart. Now here's my uh, first string open E. That's quite far apart from the second E, isn't it? My lowest E, my next highest E, and my higher E. Believe it or not, you've got another E. The 12th fret of your first string is another E. And if you had 24 frets on your guitar, you'd have another E. So you think that that's a lot. On a piano, they have eight octaves. So they have even more uh, octaves than we would have on guitar. But so just let's just make sure. If you're tuning your sixth string, remember that's on the top, and, you're, and, you're, and your string sounds like this, or even worse, you're too low. Okay, you're too low. You need to bring it up. See, now here's an example. Look at this. I brought it too far. I'm too far sharp. I'm on F. I want it to be on E. And musical alphabet is just like the regular alphabet. It goes from A to G, but it starts over again. There's no H, I, J, K, for instance. You go from A to G, and then you go again, A to G, A to G, A to G, and, and, and so forth. So if I'm on F and I keep going forward, what's going to happen here? Here's something we didn't even talk about. Let me show you this. Do you see that little tic-tac-toe looking thing right beside the F? That's the sharp sign. Okay, so if you're on a G, for instance, or a D, you don't want that tic-tac-toe on there because that's a D sharp or F sharp. Okay, you want the just a regular A or regular D, regular G, for instance. Okay, so I'm going to come down because I'm too far sharp. Slowly, look how, how much I'm, I'm gradually turning it down. One of the biggest mistakes I see any beginning guitar player do is they twist too quickly. I'm going to say that again because if you're a beginning guitarist, you're still going to do it. You twist too quickly, too, too much. Okay, twist much slower. Okay much slower. Watch how slowly I can change. I can just go from here, just that little change, and I'm all the way up to the next note, F. Just one little turn, uh, half, not even not even a quarter of a turn. So you're, you want to barely tune this, barely twist it. And there comes my E again. Now there's something else we need to talk about. When these strings are being tuned, they're changing the tension on your neck. What in the world am I talking about? These strings are pulling down on your neck as you tighten them. You've got six strings pulling down on your neck. Thankfully, we have a truss rod, which is about the shape of a pencil, but it's all the way down your neck. 
of your guitar. And it is helping to hold your guitar back so that your guitar doesn't, you know, uh, fall to the, uh, the tension of these strings pulling down on that neck. It's a counterbalance, essentially. Okay? So, uh, but uh, as you tune this guitar, if your guitar was well out of tune, um, you might want to go through this tuning three times or so until it's, you notice it stopped changing. So what I'm getting at is you can tune this guitar perfectly in tune and go back to the first string and check it again and it might be off. And you might wonder why would that string be off when I just got done tuning it? Well the tension of your neck changed and when that tension, because you changed the other strings, the tension of the neck changed and it bowed just a little bit. When it bowed just a little bit it changed all the other uh, strings tunings. So what I'm getting at is once you've checked it once go back and check it again. If you notice much change, go back and, and recheck it a third time, for instance, if your guitar especially was out of tune quite a bit. If it's out of tune, barely, which is what it's generally going to be. Once you get your guitar in tune and it's in that same uh, room for, for a while, it's not going to um, adjust that, that much. It'll usually be just a little bit flat. Um, but uh, then it's not going to be a big deal. You, you won't have to worry about going through it three or four times. Once or twice generally is fine. That's the basics uh, on tuning. I uh, hope this video was helpful. If it is, drop me some hints or drop me some comments. And if it wasn't, if you got any more questions, uh, throw them in the comments as well. Um, take care. This is Dave Byers saying uh, keep on picking and grinning. See you next time.